Now we're going to talk about filling in Photoshop and using some different fill tools. Now fill is a way for you to sort of um, make a selection and fill it either with a color, a pattern, um, or content aware fill and we're going to go over that stuff. So the first thing you need to do is just make a selection and we could just do a square selection uh, in this image. And there's a couple different locations for you to actually do a fill. Now, the main one, you can do Edit, Fill, and that'll bring up your Fill dialog box. You can also access that by right-clicking and doing Fill, which is a little bit faster in your workflow. And that's the exact same dialog box as under the Edit menu. Or you can create a fill by using the fill layers within the adjustment layers like your solid color your gradient or your pattern fill and so the adjustment layers allow you to be more flexible with that but then let's bring up our fill dialog box so under the contents, we have foreground color, which will fill our selection with the foreground color here, our background color, which will fill it with the background color, an actual color that we choose, content aware, which we'll get to that in a second, a pattern which it brings up your pattern and your presets for your pattern just like in the adjustment layer your history which is basically if you edit this image it will remember like a history of your pixels updating black 50 percent gray white so looking at the foreground color that's pretty straightforward if we hit the foreground color hit OK it's basically just going to fill our selection with black. Now let's take a look at um, the content aware fill and this is Photoshop CS5 kind of one of their flagships as far as features. Um, now we'll go through a couple examples about how this works and how this doesn't work um, because by no means is it a magic bullet. It does do some things more efficiently than others and let's take a look at that. So I'm going to cancel here and I'm going to make a better selection. Actually, I'm going to open another image. And I'm going to drag this into here. And I kind of have this fence over um, like a you know landscape shot with some buildings. Now, if we make a selection here, and obviously say we don't want the fence and we want to keep the sky and we want to keep the um, the city we could make a selection and we could right click and we could do fill content aware and what Photoshop is going to do is kind of crunch the pixels and figure out what it doesn't need and fill those in So obviously this image is kind of um, not an ideal case for this to work because it thinks you want to fill in um, the brighter area or the contrast, the higher contrast with um, the pixels that the, it just thinks that it should fill there. Now based off the selection, you know, we would think that, hey, it's going to fill in blues and some clouds to remove this fencing because that's where the contrast is. But in this case, it doesn't really work. So I'm going to crop this. You can do that by um, image crop and sort of isolate this a bit more. And then now it only really works for spot removal. You can't really just say select an image, hey, remove the fence. So if we try that, it can't do it because it doesn't really know what to do because you have everything selected. Now you could select a portion of it and see what it does. And you can see that it kind of worked, but kind of didn't. Like it, 
it assumes that you want the fence and that you're trying to get rid of the cross. So it continued that, which is kind of smart, but also not really what we want. Um, but looking at it, it did a pretty good job of figuring out, like, hey, let's put a cloud there. And it sort of created a little bit of a cloud. And under the hood, the technology is very much kind of like the clone stamp. And then it looks, looks around and kind of um, massages it a little bit. Now we're going to undo that. And let's do another part, like over here. Let's see what it does. And again, if you have this, the high contrast of the fence, it's assuming that you want to keep the fence. Um, so in this particular image, the content aware fill is not a magic bullet. Um, so let's jump back to our other image and uh, take a look at how it works there. Now here, let's say we want to remove some of the trees and some of these people and some other things that are kind of cluttering up our image. Um, now I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to do the work on there. So let's first select our tree branches in the corner here. And let's do fill and content aware. Hit OK. So Photoshop is crunching this now. And it's kind of figuring out, hey, what should we fill there? So it took a look at the image. And you can see that it continues here. And it's gonna it assumes that you want to fill that square with the rest of your clouds here. Let's deselect that so we can see it. Now, it really didn't do that bad of a job. It's by no means perfect, but if you could see the subtle contrasts here, like it sort of took the pixels from here and kind of moved it over here, because you could see some of the pattern here. Let me grab this tool here so we can see this. You can see some of the pattern here is also here. So it's a little bit like some of the technology of the clone. But I'm not really happy with the result of this. So I'm going to create a new one. Select my background, duplicate layer, drag this up. And I'm going to make a new selection. Now I'm going to use the lasso tool and make a tighter selection. Just going to quickly go around. And then we'll see what the result is from a tighter selection. Go ahead and do your fill. And let Photoshop turn away. Now, as you can see, that the result of this one is a little bit better. It's a little bit confusing, too. Like, we have um, more of our clouds as opposed to just the square, which filled it in like that. I'm going to name this one Square Selection. And I'm going to name this one like Tight Lasso. Um, and you can see it did a pretty good job there, but it also pulled in some parts of our objects, which are, I mean, a little bit questionable to me. I'm not really sure why it tried to solve this with some of the water. And also, it looks like it tried to grab some clouds from over here to match some of the contrast, and then got some of our um, tower. I don't know if I should say the name for legal reasons. John Hancock Tower um, over here, too. So again, it's not really a magic bullet. It takes you most of the way there, and uh, then you could just go ahead and touch it up. So I'm going to grab my clone tool. And um, just do a sample by holding out Alt. And maybe 
maybe I'll grab it in here and kind of fill this in. And try to remove that a little bit more and sort of design it in so it makes a little bit more sense and doesn't have some obvious pattern to it. That's the trick of the clone tool because since you're cloning, you could build up patterns of your samples really quick and uh, you don't want that. And I kind of do lots of little samples here and there just to help um, place and design some things to get your uh, something that makes sense and something that looks decent and doesn't look sort of wrong or broken. That's too dark there. I had a little bit of lightness in there, but not that. I had to find some middle values and a little bit more. So with some little work and our content fill, our content aware fill, kind of went through and cleaned that up. Now there's the difference. So it's not too bad really um, and it was pretty quick. It only took a couple minutes, not even. Now let's go ahead and remove some of the other things that are in this image. Like say we don't want this branch and again we'll do the same sort of process. We can use our lasso tool make a selection right click fill content aware let it roll deselect not too bad there. I'm gonna just there's like a little spot there, so I'm just going to kind of fill that in. Which, you know, to some degree, that's pretty good. It uh, looks good enough where most people probably wouldn't notice. And let's look at some other things we want to remove here. Um, again, we'll see our difference. And let's go down to our girl here. I'm going to go ahead use the lasso and specifically select around here. Go ahead, fill, and voila. Did a pretty good job there. Now you could kind of go crazy and do all sorts of things removing stuff like this pile of horse dung or something. Let's go ahead and select this. Fill. So in specific examples like that it works pretty well. And so we're going to go ahead and remove our handlebars here and see what it does. Now we're kind of going over some of this, and I know it's taking a little bit of time, but we're trying different examples because we want Photoshop to actually make some mistakes so we can learn more about this tool. But for the most part, it's done a pretty good job. So um, let's go ahead and select this. Ooh, got a little crazy there with the selection. I'm just going to shift so I can add that in and let's fill again and see what this does not bad now again you can see here it's kind of pulled the line from here which to me looks repetitive in the same so I'm going to go ahead and clone that out And if 
we zoom out. Let's evaluate our image. And that is your content aware fill, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can see that I sort of retouched this image and kind of removed some items pretty easily, and it's only been a couple minutes. So um, this was all done in real time. And uh, that's that tool.